Okay, so we're going to do another house plant profile, which is useful for R2114, uh, growing under protection. So there's a few house plants that we need to know all about. So last week we did Benjamin ficus over there. So this week we're doing Violet. So we've got to call this one a she because this is African Violet. Let's bring a nice one up. African Violet, which the botanical name used to be Sonpolia ionantha, but it's been renamed Streptocarpus now. Um, but I'm sure the old botanical name would still be fine for the exam. Um, so this, but we'll call it African Violet from now on because it's a lot easier to say. So what does the plant look like? They are quite small, low growing, so they're good for a small space. They're nice and compact. They've got a basal rosette of leaves. The leaves are very hairy and um, ovate in shape. And on the ones that are sort of more purple in colour, the flowers, um, the underside of the leaves also have that purple pigment, which is a adaptation for growing in low light conditions, actually. And you'll see on this one here, because this is a white, well, a sort of creamy white flowering uh, African violet, the undersides are white because the purple pigment isn't in this plant. So that's quite an interesting uh, observation as well. So the flowers, you can have these multi-petaled um, flowers and you can have, oh, I haven't got any simple ones, I don't think. You can have just simple five flowers. So this um, purple, pink, white, this one's like a yellowy, creamy colour. Um, so those, that's your range of colours. Uh, so that's what the plant looks like. The um, leaf petioles, because obviously these are the leaf petioles which go right down to the base, are easily snapped. So you've got to be quite careful when you're handling them. So that's what it looks like. Um, these grow... Their, their uh, original habitat is um, east, east of Africa, hence African violet, and they like to grow in tropical areas. So they're used to quite humid conditions and low light levels as well. And they're also used to a lot of organic matter in the soil. So we need to pass on those sort of habitat requirements to our houseplants that are here on holiday. So the first thing we need to know is how do we propagate our African violets. Now these are quite unusual in that they grow really well from a leaf petiole cutting. So basically what we do is we remove a leaf with its petiole, so the leaf stalk is called petiole, this is the lamina, making sure it's healthy. So this is going to be a white one and we're going to shorten it to around about five centimetres with a sharp cut across and then what we do we place this in some really free draining compost that's had some grit sand or perlite added to it um, and what will happen is it will first of all it will grow some roots and and I think this probably has grown roots if I tugged it and it didn't move I know it's got roots but if it hasn't got roots I could damage it so I'm not going to try pulling it so step one Step two, it's grown some roots and then once the roots have got going, it will then send up some new leaves. So you can see a new little baby African violet growing there. Once this gets a little bit bigger, that will then be potted on. So it uses the energy from this leaf lamina to, to grow. So that's how you propagate your African violet. Let's just move that out of the way. So what conditions does it like? So if we think about where it grows naturally, it likes filtered indirect sunlight. On the RHS website, it says you can move it onto a south facing window in the winter when the light levels are low, but it still be, can be quite strong. Our ones in the classroom do really well on a northwest and a northeast facing aspect. Yeah, as you can see, they do pretty well. Um, so not direct strong, strong sunlight, but they need 
Uh, I read somewhere they need enough light. If we can't see when we're reading, there's not enough light. So that's, I think, a good uh, analogy. Um, so they do need some light. Um, they like to be slightly humid. So the RHS website says to stand them on some gravel, um, which, you've, which has got a little bit of water in. So they're not actually sat in water. There's just enough water there to sort of evaporate and give it a humid atmosphere. But again, here we don't bother doing that and, and they do pretty well. So that's our light. Watering, um, they can easily be over watered. So, um, and you always water them from below. These are very unusual in that if they get cold water on the leaves, um, the leaves just die back. You get these leaf spots, which are brown and obviously just, you know, destroy the whole of the uh, ornamental value of your house plant. So you always water with lukewarm water from below. I always kind of think, well, they live in Africa normally. It's warm there. They're used to warm rain, not cold rain like they have here. So lukewarm water and always water from below. So you're best to stand it in a saucer, let it soak it up by capillarity and then obviously uh, drain off the, the saucer and then you can put it back. And you wait until the, the compost is nearly dried out before watering again. So don't let them be um, too saturated. Um, the compost that they're in, because they come from a more of a tropical woodlandy type area, they're like 30% um, organic matter mixed in with some John Innes number two. So you could, you could use peat, but we're not using that now. Um, so a peat substitute like coir, 30% coir and 70% John Innes number two. They do remain in quite small pots as well. They don't need a huge pot. In fact, they're more likely to rot if they are in too big a pot. Um, sort of a 12 centimetre half pot is sort of ideal, something like that, which is quite shallow. That's sort of the ideal pot um, for an African violet. Okay, so we're going to also look at fertiliser. So these are unusual. They like a high phosphate um, fertilizer. So they have the nitrogen, the potassium as well, but high phosphate. And here's a specific fertilizer for African violets. Now we were talking about why high phosphate, because that's normally for root growth. Um, we couldn't think of an answer, so we've emailed the company called Dibley's. And here's their catalogue here, Dibley's. And these specialise in African violet and streptocarpus as well. So we've sent them an email to ask them. So we'll get back to you in the comments section when they come back with an answer. So temperature. So the minimum nighttime temperature is 16 degrees C and the perfect daytime temperature is 18 to 24 degrees C. So that's actually quite warm, isn't it? You know, in our houses in winter, it could dip below 16. So they're not the kind of plant to put in a cold conservatory, even if it was on the north side and it wasn't getting too much light. Um, so a couple of cultivar names. Uh, there's, there's lots in the, in the catalogue you can see. I picked out a couple, um, one called Tiger, which is a variegated leaf and one called indigo ruffles. Is that indigo? That looks a bit like indigo ruffles. But anyway, it's one that's got this sort of ruffly, ruffled edge to the petals and it's an indigo colour. So there's lots of um, different varieties or cultivars that you can get from Dibley's if you want to grow some more unusual ones. So finally, um, part of our maintenance is controlling pests and diseases and these are really prone to botrytis. Now, we're, we're embarrassed to show you these because we're supposed to be looking after them, but we're in lockdown and we're, we're spending our time doing videos instead. So. <laughs> so, you know, we confess we're not perfect. So what's happened to this one? Well, we think it's been overwatered. Do you see how it's wilting? That sometimes, you know, you might think it's lack of water, but um, feeling the compost, it's very wet. So it started to wilt because the roots have probably rotted a little bit. So, you know, they, they can't take up the water. And you can also see that we've got dead flowers on here too. So these are very prone to grey mould or botrytis if they're too wet. 
So you can see a leaf here that's wilted and you can see that's getting botrytis. So we need to remove them from the bottom. So remove anything that's dead or diseased. Um, some of these are just not going to perk up again. So I'll have to pick over that a little bit more. Um, this one, you can see it's not wilted at least. So hopefully we've you know, not overwatered this one too much, but it's been very humid. This one's a lot more congested, so po possibly that's why, you know, it's been more humid. But we've got leaves here that have um, got botrytis. You can see that kind of fuzzy, fuzzy mould on there. So we need to remove those carefully. Um, and of course, now really keep an eye on not overwatering these. So we're going to let them stand... Um, in the ideal place in the wall so they can lose a bit of moisture through evaporation and not water them until they're nearly dry and really there's not a lot else we can do i'm going to pick off obviously all the the dead bits um we i suppose you could possibly um, repot it and remove some of the really wet damp soil but i mean it's already been a bit compromised so whether it would recover or not i'm not sure possibly you could try that as well so I think that was all I wanted to say about African violet. Um, so all of our violets are saying goodbye and um, these two are looking forward to a bit more TLC.